They're gonna have the trigger testing QR5 Pro, but I'd love to test it against other low kick sticks. So I brought out the trigger. Man, does this thing just fly in comparison to the QR5 Pro? So unfortunately, the best part about testing sticks back to back, you bring out another low kicker like the Trigger 7, and the Warrior unfortunately doesn't compare. Today we are testing the QR5 Pro. Just a regular review today. Whip through some shots, give you guys my thoughts. I was here with the Bauer Agent, so a really great comparison and two low kick sticks. And of course, right away, picking up the QR5 Pro feels actually much heavier than the Bauer Agent to be expected. 395 grams. So we're gonna whip through really quick, shot power, release, durability, feel and balance, and give you guys the thoughts more back at the house after the ice time, the QR5 Pro. What's going on you guys? Justin, AKA Boomer Beer League Bum Hockey Reviews. And today I actually have a quick re review for you. And uh, you know, I put a lot of effort into my reviews sometimes, um, but when it comes to the QR5 Pro, I wanted to release it mostly just so I could give you guys my recommendation if you were thinking of getting this stick and you're a low kick stick guy. I love my Warrior LX Pro and whenever I have one, because there is one available at the store that I shop at, I always pick it up just to have it. And I really wanted to try the QR5 Pro. And unfortunately, after a number of games with it and an on ice session that I'm gonna put in this video, um, you'll see that I was just, you know, kind of eh, meh about it so at the end of the day I, I was going to keep this review short and my recommendation for the qr5 pro unfortunately is buy a trigger buy a wrecker buy a pro stock hockey stick.com stick in a low kick and avoid this and i really am disappointed just mostly because the stick is okay but the problem is those other sticks are just better and with a price point of 359 dollars canadian you might as well just go with the other sticks because they're going to give you the performance. So really quick with the QR5 Pro, here's kind of the overall on the QR5. It has a really nice grip, which is an improvement on the LX Pro. That stick had a horrible grip. So the stick on this or the grip on this stick is excellent. It is a very whippy stick. So if you really kind of don't like the wrecker or trigger because those are actually very stiff and you prefer whippy, then that's the only reason I would recommend the QR5 Pro. So if you're the whippy stick low kick guy, definitely pick this up instead of the wrecker or the trigger. But if you actually want the shot power and the overall versatility of the other sticks, definitely don't get the QR5 Pro because this has an okay release on wrist shots, but it's lacking a lot of power on snap and slap shots. So this kind of falls into that true hazardous category where it just doesn't really bring anything else to the rest of the game. So it's a little bit unfortunate, but let's get into the on ice review. I'm gonna keep it quick here, guys, just because like I said, I gave you my recommendations and we'll finish it up with the overall ranking. When I was shooting with the QR5 Pro, I was kind of hoping for LX Pro power, um, but I was pretty quickly disappointed. You know, I had to put a lot into it and due to the whippy nature of the stick, it didn't have great recoil, which means your shot power kind of lags a little bit. I'm putting everything into these and I really didn't get that much in return. And unfortunately, once you started doing your dragging wrist shots and snapshots, you know, it was pretty average. So it's just a little bit disappointing, just mostly because Warrior usually does kind of bring really good shooting power with the uh, last couple lines. But the Covert line is built for quick release. But even that, you know, I'm not greatly impressed by either. So shot power, three out of five. The other thing with this stick is I picked up a 75 as I always do for my low kicks and I had to cut it down two or three inches because it is a 63. So even at a 75, it was extremely whippy, which is very interesting. And that's part of the reason that it probably lacks the shot power. You'd probably actually have to go up a little bit and flex. In terms of the actual low kick on this, definitely more of a low kick feel and kind of comes in at the three for shot power, trigger seven, 3.5 at the agent at four. So this is one of the lower shot power in terms of low kick sticks. So let's kind of see how the release kind of feels. 
in comparison to the trigger and the agent which I've been using tonight. So when it came to release with the QR5 Pro, being a low kick stick is that's kind of what you want it to do and you kind of know that you're giving up shot power. But the reason I was a little bit disappointed is because I noticed that goalies, I was not catching them off guard as much in the games that I was using with this. I don't actually have many highlights because actually I was getting stoned most of the time on my shooting. And then once I switched back to the agent, I'd start scoring again. And there's just that much of a difference between the agent and the QR5 Pro and of course the Trigger 7. So unfortunately with the release here, you got a 3.5 on a stick that's built for release because of its lacking recoil power. It drags it down. So I always rock 75 flexes for my low kick sticks just so I can flex it a little better with my wrists. And what I've noticed is this stick plays very whippy, especially in comparison to the Agent, and its recoil is not the same. That Agent is very, very stiff with a really powerful recoil. So when I'm releasing on these shots, I have to put a lot more into it to get the full flex of that low kick, then you get that good release. As you can see there. My lazy releases, when I'm just, Lazy, not quite as good. Whereas the agent with a lazy release is much better. All right, let's talk feel, weight, and balance. In terms of feel on the actual uh, blade, it's, it's, it's nice, it's like, it's noticeable where the puck is. You know, when I'm moving it around and doing a little bit of a curl, you can kind of feel it, so I definitely, <laughs> know where the puck is, and the feel is good in that regard. The problem I have with this, in terms of feel, weight, and balance, is I was just using the agent, and this does feel heavy. For a low kick stick, weighing on a scale at 395, when most low kickers these days are, you know, 375, 380, and then when you cut them down, they're even a bit less. It seems a bit like a step in the wrong direction for Warrior, but I also didn't weigh the QR10, so I'm not 100% sure. But in just terms of how it feels, the blade is okay. You won't lose where it is. It'll be fine. But again, that release is not quite the same as the agent. I didn't go into crazy durability testing with the QR5. Uh, Warrior has not always had the best durability, but over the last little while, I've noticed that it has improved. So my final thoughts here are durability is probably a four out of five. Actually a pretty durable stick. I've used it for about four or five games over the course of switching back and forth with the agent. The thing basically looks brand new. You know, as a forward, I'm not taking face offs anything like that. So, you know, my overall thoughts of the QR5 Pro is if you're a warrior guy, you're gonna like the whippiness of the stick, which will, of course, let you like the release. But in terms of low kickers, the problem I have here is that it doesn't really bring anything that's spectacular. So, at the end of the day, you know, you got the agent low kick, trigger low kick, and this is more like the wrecker, basically. So, unfortunately, warrior, you did an okay stick, you just didn't really bring anything that's gonna dethrone the trigger or the agent. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. See you next time. Well guys, this is the first stick review where I've actually gotten bored testing a stick. And I really actually feel bad about it because in testing the Warrior QR5 Pro, I just really was so unimpressed overall because it just was just an average stick in every category. And unfortunately, coming from the QRE10, which I would have thought they would have upgraded in this, there was really just nothing there. So I actually feel bad about this review for the first time because Warrior doesn't hype their sticks or anything like the True Hazardous was or the Agent. So it's not like Warrior was talking out their you know, rear ends about this stick. So you can't really fault them. They released it. It's a low kick stick. But here's the challenge that comes with that is they're going to have kind of a pretty low end low kick stick for the foreseeable future in this cycle until they update it. But here's the good news, guys, is we got a Warrior Novium that we're going to test 
And if it's anything like the LX Pro and it's got the power that we like, I'm really looking forward to shooting this. So thanks for watching, guys. Again, if you want that low kick stick, stick with the trigger, the agent, the wrecker, or a pro stock hockey stick.com. See you next time. If you made it this far, you know that my stick tier list comes at the end and I put the Warrior QR5 Pro kind of near the bottom here. It's not something that I would avoid like the True Hazardous and the Bower Sling, etc. It's just there is better sticks on the market. The reason that I'm putting the new stick tier list up with an updated stick list for all new generation is a future video Boomer Stick Tier List 2.0. If you know of my old one was the 1.0, so we got to do a 2.0 with all the new releases in the coming months.